All right, so a huge welcome to each and every one of you. And uh, I have got a very, very special treat for you. Joining me tonight, hot off of the Super Bowl. Did you watch the Super Bowl tonight, George? Yeah, oh, I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> and where, where are you going for the Patriots or the Eagles? You know, the thing is, I'm an enormous hockey fan. And so I watch the Super Bowl because I love the commercials. What actually happens on the field, eh, I could go either way. Uh, you watch it for the commercials. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, One of my uh, really close buddies here in Lisbon is actually uh, um, got a whole podcast thing going for um, for NFL. And uh, so I had to watch it with him. So I'm, I'm suitably tired this morning that round right yeah. right sure <laughs> uh so as you can hear i am joined by george lawrence who is actually this is george right here yeah, yeah. cool so That's joined right. by george who happens to be the boss the boss hog at merchant words which you probably know by now is my absolute favorite keyword research due diligence tool for product discovery and all round usability Merchant Words is my absolute favorite tool, and I've been talking about Merchant Words for ages. And so I thought it'd be really cool to get George onto a call and have him talk a little bit about Merchant Words and uh, maybe if we can persuade him to give us a little bit of a discount on Merchant Words, something like that. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see what happens, see what we can blag as we go through things. Uh, but it, as I said, it's been a fantastic tool for me, and it's my number one. It's become the tool that I rely on out of all the things that I use, I find myself repeatedly going back to it. And the main reason for that is because of the quality of the data that comes up on Merchant Words. I just think it's second to none. I'm not sure what you guys are doing as far as that, George, but whatever it is you're doing, keep it up because the quality of the information that Merchant Words spits out is just absolutely second to none. Well, thanks very much. We work very hard to make it as good as we possibly can. Thank you. And George, for those people who don't know much about Merchant Words, can you kind of give us a bit of a synopsis of what it is? Sure. So what we do is we endeavor to help people figure out exactly what people are searching for when they shop online, but more specifically, not just what they're looking for, how they search for it. And there's a real big distinction there because even if, you know, if a hundred different people are, are all looking to buy the exact same thing, each of those hundred people are probably going to have slightly different search terms that they use when they search for it. And so as a seller, when we're creating our listing, uh, whether it's the stuff that the user can see, you know, the bullet points or the title and whatnot, or whether it's that uh, backend keywords that only the Amazon computer can see. Either way, when we're trying to describe our product, we need to really think about how the user is going to be searching when they search for it. And so I realized, you know, I, I, back in the day, I was an Amazon seller. I still am, but uh, I started off this adventure by being an Amazon seller myself. And I realized the only real way to scale my company, you know, as an Amazon seller would be to try to figure out this logical disconnect, right? This cognitive uh, gap, if you will, between what I know about the product as the seller and what people are looking to buy as the buyer. And, and I figured if I could do anything to help me bridge this gap, then that would make my company more successful selling Amazon products. And so I noodled around a little bit and I kind of stumbled onto this idea of, well, if I, if I figure out the very best keywords that people use when they search, that should help. And sure enough, it did. And word of mouth got around to my seller friends and they're like, hey, don't just keep that to yourself, man. Turn it into a service. Make that a business. Uh, I'll give you a few bucks, but share that data with me because I want it. And that's kind of how Merchant Words got started. So we, in, in a nutshell, we bridge the gap between what the seller knows about his product, which is usually all the stuff that makes up the product itself, like the physical attributes, uh, the material is made out of, what size it is, that kind of stuff. It bridges the gap between what the seller knows about the product and how the user searches for it. And if you think about it, users are going to search for it in all kinds of different ways. And it's rarely the exact same way that the seller thinks about it when they're selling it. And George, famously, Amazon does not share any of their data. Their API is terrible. How, how are you accessing the, the quality of data that you're able to get access, given, given that Amazon doesn't actually give us an API or anything into, into what's, what people are actively searching for? How do you get that data? 
Yeah, so uh, if, if you'd like, if you promise not to tell anyone, I'll, I'll tell you our secret sauce. <laughs> Let's hear it. Yes. Uh, yeah, right. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll spill the beans. And so, you know, here's how it works. Our, it, it's kind of a multi-step process, but our first step is precisely what I was doing anyway, myself manually. And, you know, we just automated it. And so, as you can imagine, if you just go to the Amazon website and you just start typing things in, that auto-suggest bar starts populating all kinds of interesting suggestions. So, for example, I see you've got it up right there. My favorite example is a type in the letter I go to go to all searches uh, you know go to all categories and then type just the letter I and obviously you know it's going to come up with all kinds of iPhone things like iPhone case charger etc now type G uh, so you got IG up there exactly right so now look at this you got like igloo cooler and other kinds of things right igloo lunchbox now do me a favor type U so we have IGU on the screen <laughs> now check this out. The, the very the very next thing underneath that is iguana food. You know, obviously, I'm sure those are for pets or whatever. I have no idea why you got to buy iguana food on Amazon. But here's the thing: what we learned from this is we learned that iPhone and those related searches are more popular than igloo cooler and those related searches. And we also know that iPhone and igloo cooler together are more popular than iguana food and those related searches. And even though that doesn't seem like enough, that's still very, very powerful. So even if we didn't go any further than just this, we've still learned something here today. And so if you were thinking about becoming a seller of something online, you might realize that if you were selling iguana food, you might not have that many customers looking for you. But if you're selling igloo coolers, you'll have a few more. And if you're selling iPhone cases, you'll have a ton of people looking for you. So that's how we figure out popularity is we first start with this relative measure. Now, since we've kind of automated this test, we do this much, much better than you could do it manually, of course. Uh, for example, one of the benefits, apart from the just sheer scale, right? Because if you do this yourself, you get tired after a few minutes or hours of it. And you know, when a computer does it, it works all day long and weeks and weeks on end. Uh, but the other interesting thing is, let's say, for example, uh, those little Nintendo figurines, the uh, uh, Amiibos, Ami Amiibos, whatever those things are called, that they're gaining popularity, the little toy from, um, from Nintendo. Uh, now, if you were to type Amiibo, you would see all kinds of search variations that begin with Amiibo. I think it's spelled A-M-I-I, A-M-I-I-B-O, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, go. these are all the rage. These are all the rage. I don't know if your kids are the right age to like uh, really want to buy these Amiibo things, but you'll see all kinds of different uh, Amiibos all over the world. Uh, now, the interesting thing is if you were doing this search and tried to figure out how people are searching for Amiibo, you would probably think, as we've done here, you type in Amiibo and you kind of see what suggestions come down. But do me a favor, go back up into the search bar, type in Amiibo, and then hit a space. But what it doesn't show you is how people search for this. And it turns out most people don't search for Amiibo Mario. Most people search for Mario Amiibo or Zelda Amiibo or something something Amiibo, their favorite character Amiibo. And if you were trying to answer the question, which of all the Amiibo characters is the most popular, you really wouldn't have the ability to just type into the suggestion bar right here, Amiibo, and then see those kinds of searches because you don't know how they begin their search. You know, you know, you know how you can uh, you can speculate that they type in a word and then they follow it with Amiibo, but this method of trying it out yourself manually wouldn't actually divulge that to you. And so one of the benefits of our automated approach of doing this is since we kind of do A through Z, we discover all of the Amiibo related searches that have the term anywhere in the search term. And so we'll tell you that Zelda Amiibo is a popular search term. And we'll tell you that uh, you know, uh, Mario Amiibo is a popular search term. You don't necessarily suss that out yourself by typing in Amiibo and looking at the suggestions. Does that make sense? Did I explain that well? I think so, yeah. Guys, if you've got any questions as we're going through this, then just, just post them in the, in the comments area. George, so does that then mean that, for instance, in this particular uh, search, Amiibo Zelda has got a greater search volume than Amiibo Mario versus Amiibo Link? Like, is it actually laid out in terms of search volume here on the auto suggest? Yeah, you know what? We've seen evidence that that is the case, although I wouldn't necessarily rely on that being the fact. What is, however, uh, something you can rely on is our little earlier experiment when we typed in I and saw only iPhone suggestions come up. Well, Igloo Cooler and Iguana Food both begin with I, and so they have the potential of appearing there. 
right? But the reason yeah. that they don't is they're because they're on the next level down, if you will. Mm. Uh, and so, you know, I, I kind of think of that as a concept of like how deep a hierarchy is. And so the things that are shallow up at the very top, those are more popular than the things that appear deeper down. So uh, for example, iguana pet food appears three levels deep in the hierarchy. It's less popular than the things that appear one level deep in the hierarchy, like iPhone charger. Uh, however, we have seen evidence that even at the same depth, if you will, you know, when the things appear together, those things that you're seeing together at the same level of suggestion, uh, we have seen evidence that the things suggested higher up at the top tend to be more popular than the things suggested at the bottom. But the real indicator are things that appear further down in the hierarchy. You know, then, then you can explore the long tail that way. Uh, but let me, let me come back to what I was explaining a second ago. Our first step to collect our data is we go to Amazon just like you would probably go to Amazon if you were trying to answer this question yourself without worrying about the problems of scale and whatnot. You'd probably just experiment on the suggestion page. And many people do it that way, and that's a great way to get started. Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, but then what we do is we take all of this knowledge that we learn and put it into our database. Now, if you think about it, like we we're talking about iPhone and iguana food and whatnot, we understand the relative positions that each of these frames phrases that we discover this way have with every other phrase that we discover this way. We discover hundreds of millions of phrases this way. And so if you think about it for a second, we know that iPhone charger is more popular than the other hundreds of millions of phrases that we're going to discover eventually. And then we know that iguana pet food is less popular than a few that we discovered above it, but it's more popular than the ones we're going to discover underneath it. And so we understand the relative position in the grand scheme of things, even though we haven't yet figured out the exact measured number. So that's the first step. The first step is figuring out the phrase themselves and where it kind of fits in this hierarchy. Then the second step is, and, and in fact, let me just go off on a quick aside. Uh, the very first version of Merchant Words that I started sharing with my Amazon seller friends just simply had a percentile that kind of gave a relative strength, if you will, of how strong this, this word was. Well, you know, was it a long tail word? Was it in the middle of the pack? Was it high? Uh, and then 100% all my buddies who were trying this out in the early days, they're like, yeah, but I got to know the exact number. Is that 10,000 searches a month? Is, is that 1,000 searches a month? Is that 100,000? What, yeah, what? Is yeah. it every... Everybody, they couldn't really wrap their brain around percentile. And I explained what a percentile was, and they're like, okay, totally get it, totally get it. Uh, so 80th percentile, does that mean 100,000 searches a month? And I'm like, no, 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 sorry. You, you just don't get the concept of percentile. So we knew that we had to kind of take the next step and render this relative position into something that we kind of understand intuitively. So what we decided to do is – even though we understand the relative position of all these keywords, we wanted to just kind of come up with a good way to estimate what we believe is the actual number of searches that each of these phrases uh, had in a typical month. And so what we do in a nutshell to come up with that is we estimate the total number of searches we believe occur in Amazon in a month. It's a very big number and Amazon doesn't disclose that yeah, exactly. So what we do is we just estimate it from a variety of sources and we take that very, very large number and we spread it in a proportional way across all of the keywords that we've discovered, still uh, maintaining fidelity to this relative position that we know. And so using that kind of like uh, spreading, if you will, of all of the total number of estimated searches across all of our keywords in a relative fashion, that is what essentially happens in order to give us the, uh, the keyword estimate that we have on our website. Now, we take a few other signals as input signals into our algorithm. And uh, a couple of years ago, we hired a data science team because we wanted to make sure we were actually doing this in the best possible way that we could. And our data science team essentially, you know, when we got them up to speed and again exposed to them, this algorithm I just explained to you is kind of two-step approach. Uh, they looked at me and they said, wow, you know, that's that's actually really good. Your, your number's doing just that and that alone, that's really, really good. But then the data science team kind of like put on their propeller hats and got to work thinking about ways to improve it. Uh, what we've done recently is we've taken input signals from some of the PPC or paid advertising numbers that we get. And so as, as many of you know, I'm sure when you do paid advertising in Amazon, you'll get some uh, really great numbers back in terms of performance and whatnot of the keywords that you're paying for. And we have access to a lot of that paid data. Uh, much of it comes from my own company. We have other sources. And then we take all of that PPC data, we bake it right into our algorithm as one of its input signals. And so now we have this, uh, you know, just sort of like the way Google works, but it's a complex algorithm that takes multiple input signals and decides what we think is the best estimate we can possibly come up with to show you the number of searches that got in Amazon. Wow. So you're using various different data points to create this overall impression of, of what the actual search volume is. 
That's exactly right. Yeah. And we, you know, one of the things that people uh, wonder and ask me about, and I just want to kind of mention it to make sure it's clear that uh, we don't actually get any data from the search engine. So no, nothing from Yahoo or Amazon or Bing, sorry, nothing from Yahoo or Google or Bing, none of the general search engines. We don't take any of that data. Uh, although we have a similar process as those general search engines, we don't take any of their data as any input signals. All of our data comes straight from Amazon. Well, that is very, very interesting, interesting particularly because I know there's a number of um, so-called competing products that do take other products outside of Amazon to actually um, create their data sets. Yeah, and you know what? If I was actually building a website and I just wanted traffic to it, not necessarily people looking to buy something, but just any search traffic, then I would have no problem using keywords uh, tools that use uh, Google and Bing and whatnot, uh, because uh, that's the mix of what people are looking for out there on the inter internet. But that's actually the problem, and that is, if I'm selling something online and I look at one of those sources, I'm going to get keyword searches that have other kinds of intent behind them, not necessarily the purchase intent to buy something. Could be uh, somebody doing homework or research or looking to download something for free or, or whatever, it, it doesn't necessarily indicate that someone's looking to buy something. But when you look at Amazon data, that 100% means if someone's uh, looking to buy something either right now or in the near future, that definitely has purchase intent behind that activity. Mm, absolutely. If somebody's searching for something on Amazon, then is it, as you say, there's a high likelihood that they're there to actually buy the product rather than research the product. Exactly right. Yeah, I was chatting with someone recently at a trade show and uh, he said, you know, I, I love your product. I said, thanks. And, and he said, I'm in a particular niche where my business sells only products related to the French Revolution. And I'm like, wow, that, that's a very that's niche. niche. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's, that's a very specific store you're running. But OK, you know, hey, whatever floats your boat, that's fine. And uh, he said, whenever I use keyword tools that use regular search engine data, they are just overwhelmingly the kinds of search terms of people looking to do their homework or research paper, or a term paper for school or university, uh, you know, people who want to like understand the timeline and the characters involved and how, you know, the outcomes and the political ramifications. Uh, and, and when we use a tool, um, when we use Merchant Words, it has 100% purchase intent behind it. It's all of this, all of the terms that people use when they're searching to buy something about the French Revolution. And well, first of all, I had no idea there were stores that sell like French Revolution posters, but there are stores that sell French <laughs> Revolution posters. But, but anyway, th th this guy was telling me that it was so hard to find a good keyword source because, as you can imagine, most of the general search terms for the French Revolution are all about some kind of academic purpose. Very few of them are about some people looking to buy something. Just as a as a interesting thing, what do you currently believe is the most searched for thing on Amazon? Oh my goodness! Well, I, I use as an example one of the one of the top trending terms lately, um, the amiibo. Then uh, squishies are becoming really popular. Now, these are things that I, we see are trending, right? It doesn't necessarily mean they're uh, the biggest. And and actually, let me just give you a couple of highlights from the things we see trending, and then I'll come back to the things which I think the biggest. So I give you two answers for one question. Uh, so uh, uh, amiibo is is big. Squishies are big. Uh, slime had a big phase where teenagers and kids worldwide were starting to make slime. Uh, we've seen interesting trends in. Um, jigsaw puzzles and uh, coloring books designed for adults. Uh, not like, you know, mature, like it's, uh, you know, X-rated or anything, but just like it's an adult level jigsaw puzzle or an adult level uh, coloring book. And I thought that was really fascinating. Mm. And then, of course, then of course, trends uh, that are, are seasonal or are happening with events of things related to football because of the Super Bowl, those were trending recently and, uh, you know, all those kinds of things. But Overall, uh, the thing that's probably the number one across all of Amazon are anything related to iPhones or any kind of, uh, you know, cell phone. Those just people just, I guess, don't want to shop for a, uh, an iPhone case in person. They'd much rather do it uh, online at Amazon. And frankly, uh, I've been inside of a couple of cell phone accessory stores, and I'm like, I don't blame people at one bit. This is a terrible experience to try to, like, make sense out of all this noise. It's much easier to just go to your computer and buy the exact case you're looking for on Amazon and be done with it. So uh, to come back to my uh, to come back to what I think is the biggest thing going on out there, I think it's iPhone cases. However, let me caution everybody before you drop your inventory and pick up <laughs> Bunch of iPhone cases, start selling them. And that very, very competitive, right? And so that's the catch twenty two. Is once something is discovered to be a big seller, where lots, lots of people are looking for it, then that attracts lots of buyers, and that kind of like softens the opportunity. So the real trick is either be niche enough for your particular goals that you don't have a lot of competition, or make sure that you're ready to uh, fight the fight and beat out all the other sellers, and, and whatever that means in your particular uh, business or niche. But you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna always look for the biggest keyword.
keywords in terms of like the biggest problem, most popular products, you know, make sure that you have what it takes to stand up above your competition. However, one quick uh, tangent off of this concept, and that is a lot of times people will be selling a popular product and your competitors, of course, will be selling the same popular product. But what your competition hasn't been doing is they haven't been optimizing their listings for the ways that people search for it. And so one of the things that you can do when you think about how am I going to beat my competition is isn't necessarily how am I going to sell something more popular than what they're selling. It's how can I market it better? Mm. Now, that might mean, is my photography better? It might mean, uh, you know, do I have a better title than the kind of products that they're selling? But it could also mean, are my descriptions in the keyword, are my keywords in my bullet points and my title and in my back end keywords, are those the right match for how people are searching? Because it could very well be that your competitors, and even you, if you haven't taken time to think about this, have a description that doesn't really, uh, you know, your keywords doesn't really inform the Amazon matching algorithm that you're the thing that people are looking for or that your thing should be featured at the top and is the most relevant for what people are looking for. But once you close that gap, once you inform the Amazon algorithm that your product is exactly what people are looking for because it contains all the same things that they're searching when they search in their search terms, then you can get ahead of your competition that way because Amazon says, you know what? There's 40 different products that match this guy's search term, but only one matches it so closely that he deserves to be given a, you know, given a little priority there. So that'll bump you up to the top. Well, that's a great tip. And that also uh, then, then suggests that because Amazon is moving more towards verse voice search using Echo and things like that, are you seeing more long-tailed searches being done? Yeah, and you know, here's the interesting thing. I I, I always get in trouble. Uh, you know, my my marketing guys they yell at me when I talk about uh, upcoming uh, products and things that we're working on because I don't really have a precise timeline of when we're going to be ready to launch it and then uh, have that data available to you. But we're we're currently now collecting data that's fascinating because it shows how people search in uh, search for products using spoken commands of Alexa mm-hmm. versus how they search when they're typing, and it's very different because if you can imagine a scenario here where someone's typing. And it, just like we were showing uh, with your screen share, you're typing away furiously. And as you're typing, we see suggestions come pouring down from the, uh, the the search bar. Well, normally what people will do is if they're paying attention to those suggestions, as soon as they see one that matches, the light will turn on. They'll stop typing. They'll just arrow down a couple of, of lines until they hit the right one and click search on it. So we've seen that that suggestions that pops down actually does influence the precise search yeah. that the user selects. So in their mind, maybe they were going to search for uh, one particular thing, and then as they begin and typing, they see the suggestions and one of it strikes their fancy and that's the one they intended to do. They arrow down to it and click go. And that may not be exactly what they had in mind in terms of the words they were going to use, but of course, it'll still be the same product they were looking for. In fact, uh, not to get too detailed into that one specific point, we've seen a kind of a rise in the years of the long tail searches. And it's not because people love typing and they just can't wait to type in 60 or 70 or 80 characters. It's because they're apt to choose those suggestions and those suggestions sometimes our long tail suggestions that kind of boosts them in the popularity uh, but but to come back to my earlier point we're taking a look at the difference between how people behave when they're typing in their uh, search query versus when they speak their search query it's just fascinating to me uh, the differences hopefully we'll have that available in a, a new feature or somehow we'll roll that out to so people can take advantage of it but as the data is coming in and before our data science guys have kind of taken a look at it I've looked at the raw data where we have access to and it it just blows me away that uh, people speak a certain way when they're looking for stuff and then they type a certain way when they're looking for stuff it's crazy i would find that extremely fascinating to go through all right so george i've got loads and loads of questions for you and i'm aware that uh your time is very precious let me see if i can give some questions so sue has asked uh why do you think amazon won't release their a uh, real data. One would think that AMZ would want sellers to be more successful like eBay does with Terapeak, for instance. Right. Well, uh, the real answer is any question that begins with, why do you think Amazon does XYZ or ABC? The real answer is, you know what? That's who knows? That's Amazon, right? Who's ever going to really know how Amazon yeah. works? Uh, you know, I, I will tell you one thing. And th- there's, first of all, I want to disclaim right up front that I'm not going to have an answer to your question. I've got a few guesses and a few speculations. Uh, I was at a trade show once, and then some of the people from the Amazon search quality team approached me after my little uh, presentation. I'm like, uh oh, you know, are they are they going to come <laughs> here and like punch? Are they here to punch me in the face or handcuff me and take me away? What? Why does the search quality team, you know, want to talk to me? And uh, they said, hey. 
want to make sure, you know, the, this tool you've been working on, I want to make sure that you're not misleading people to try to stuff as many irrelevant keywords as you possibly can. And I said, no, no, I would never do that. In fact, that's the whole purpose of the tool is so people can choose the best and most relevant keywords, so uh, quite the opposite. And then they kind of shrugged their shoulders and said, okay, good, because, uh, you know, we're on the search quality team and our full-time job is to make sure that people don't keyword stuff and don't try to use irrelevant uh, searches. And what I think maybe, to come back and kind of guess at the answer to your question, I think maybe if Amazon were to say, hey, everyone in the world, this is our number one search term, this right here, and then number two and three and four, et cetera, all the way down. I think what people would mistakenly do is start taking those first couple of uh, the most popular ones and pepper their listings with it. And you know, that's just a bad idea because what you really are looking for isn't necessarily what is the most popular search term. What you're looking for is what is the best search term that will put me ahead of my competition. Uh, you can give you a, you know, you can think of a thousand different examples, right? But it's that, like that old joke, uh, two guys are walking through the woods and all of a sudden a bear chases them and so they're running as fast as they can and, and the one guy says, hey, do you think we can outrun this bear? And the, his friend says, I'm not trying to outrun the bear, I'm only trying to outrun you. <laughs> so, so, you know, the, the, the idea is uh, you, don't, you don't really necessarily want to dominate every search in your category, but what you do want to do is you want to be presented to the eyeballs that are looking for your product. And I think maybe Amazon doesn't necessarily say, okay, here's our top keywords, because I don't think they want people to take those keywords and start stuffing them willy-nilly into places where they maybe might not belong. That's my hunch, but really, I honestly don't know why Amazon does what Amazon does. If only we could know. If only we had Jeff's direct dial, it would be so much easier for us all. Yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't giving that number out, though. All right, so next question but from I'm Steve. Um, Steve says, George, will there be an option for Merchant Words Amazon Australia? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. So a couple of days ago, actually, we launched a beta version of Amazon Australia. And what I mean by that is, uh, am, uh, mer sorry, we launched a beta version of Merchant Words that has Australian data. So if you're a subscriber to what we call our global product, then what you can do is see Amazon Australia data right alongside with all the other marketplaces of Amazon. So um, I'm looking at your screen share here. Yeah, exactly right. And so uh, what our global product did up until just a few days ago would show you all of the different search terms from those countries that you see, you know, uh, US, Canada, and then the European countries. And uh, just a few days ago, we added uh, Australia and Japan. And the reason we keep the beta flag on these two isn't because this data is not good or it's it's not correct or whatever. It's, it's, it's good and it's correct, but there's just not much of it yet. And so, uh, you know, since Amazon is uh, brand new, of course, uh, you know, there's soaring in popularity with the recent announcement of, of their launch, although they haven't launched FBA yet. And so many people are saying, hey, you're not really launched as Amazon until you launch FBA. Uh, but of course, when you look at the numbers, uh, traffic's uh, you know, growing exponentially, number of sellers are growing. Uh, so we know uh, Amazon on, a, on Australia is going to become a gigantic thing. And that's great for everybody, right? But they're, the keyword variety is kind of starting off uh, sort of small. And that's why we put the beta flag on there, because the keywords that you will see under Amazon Australia, when you click, you, you got to click on the little Australia flag there and then you'll see the keyword variations that occur with our Amazon data set and even though the number of search term variations in this case 73 if you're looking at the screen for iPhone case even though the number of variations is not huge it still gives you what we think is a reasonably good prediction of search volume however like I mentioned since uh, the number of searches are still relatively small although they're growing we wanted to keep the beta flag on until we collected a more robust data set but uh, pretty soon as soon as our data science guys get their head fully wrapped around the data that we're collecting we'll pull that beta flag off and then uh, you know you'll have numbers that uh, I think are going to be just as solid as any other country that we support so to answer your question we just launched it a few days ago it's in beta feel free to use the numbers now because they're they're good in terms of making business decisions, but we're going to be getting so many so much new data and keyword variations coming in the next few months. I'd consider it a, kind of like a, a beta source of data for you until we can see more. Mm, I think that's very I think that's very fair actually, and uh, well well put, George. Uh, Lisa says, is it possible to use merchant words to find trending keywords? So you've already discussed a couple of trending things, George. Is there any way to use merchant words to discover trending items? 
Yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad you asked. Here's another one of those things where my marketing department's going to get mad at me. But you know what, honestly, <laughs> I, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather tell you and have my marketing folks get mad at me. That's okay. Um, we, we have collected enough historical data now that we're able to predict uh, trending. And that's how I kind of pulled together some of these interesting things that I shared with you a moment ago. You know, there's hundreds of other trends, both up, which of course you're interested in, and down, which uh, unfortunately you might also keep your eye on as well. But uh, th these trends going up and down, some of them are predictable because of their seasonality. Uh, you know, like we just talked about the, the Super Bowl and uh, American football, you know, that's predictable because of the seasons there. Also things like, uh, you know, flip-flops and, uh, you know, shorts and uh, things. Even though, even though our seasons are flipped, Australia and, and North America, it's still very predictable because of seasonality. But there are things that are easy to predict because the, the search volume, they're just rising and, or the search volume is falling. So this is a long-winded uh, way for me to say we've got all that data and our data science team is working to put it in a way that we can publish it on the website. So look very soon for us to be offering historical analysis of keyword volumes. And as part of that, we'll be able to now predict uh, forward-looking trends that are both uh, ranking up and ranking down as things progress. So oh, coming soon. Very, very cool. That would be an awesome functionality to have into that. That would that'd be really cool. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. That would be excellently cool. All right, so uh, Howard says, well, look, now that we're on this screen, George, so I've got here a search for iPhone case, and we can see here, because a couple of people are asking me, what does this screen mean? So you can see here, for instance, that there's 621,773 underneath here, what, what does that mean? And then how does that fit in with the actual estimated search volume? Like how do, what does this page mean? That is a fantastic question. And you know what, I kind of bang my head against the wall trying to figure out how to make this a little clearer or easier to, easier to understand. And you know, honestly, if you've got any suggestions for me, once I kind of walk you through the page, I'd love to hear it because uh, I'd love to make this, uh, this data that you're looking at just instantly understandable. Underneath each flag, so in this case, 621,000 going all the way over to Australia is 73. What that means is that's the number of search term variations that we have in our database. And so if you type in iPhone case, as this example shows, we look through all 100 million search terms that we've collected for anything that matches both iPhone and case inside the search term. And as you can see here, you found iPhone 7 plus case, iPhone 7 case, et cetera, all the way on down. Now, the interesting thing is in the United States, there's 621,000 variations or 16, uh, 621,000 uh, different search phrases that all have the, the terms iPhone and case in it. So that's a measure of how, how varied the search term ecosystem is that matches your search term. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily show you the volume or the amplitude. What shows you the volume or the amplitude is what's in the column there that says estimated monthly search volume. So in this case, you can see iPhone 7 cases uh, seem to be at the top and then iPhone 8 after that, et cetera, on down. And you can look at that by the estimated number of search terms. So the monthly search volume, the column, that gives you kind of like the, now remember it's our estimate, but that gives you the uh, kind of size, if you will, of the body of people searching searching for that exact same search term. But the number at the top under the flag kind of gives you the width, if you can kind of visualize it, of how many different kinds of search terms there are. So for example, if you were to click over to Amazon, I wouldn't necessarily say, oh, there's only 73, that's very low search volume. Don't think of it as search volume, think of it as search variety. Mm. And then from that variety, then we see the actual volume in the column below. Uh, I hope I hope I explained that well. And like I said, if you've got any suggestions about how I can make this page clearer, I'll be happy to do it because uh, that's something that we have a hard time communicating, that the numbers under the flags kind of talks about variety or uh, width, if you will, of how big the search volume uh, kind of ecosystem is. And then the, each number in the column talks about how high or how tall the, the search volume itself is for each specific phrase. That's a really good explanation of that, George. Thank you for that. And I, I'd imagine now that you're seeing, just to revert back to what I was saying, with uh, voice search versus um, uh, typed searches, I'd imagine you're seeing that, that uh, variation across search volume search phrases get even higher as, as more and more people are using echo and things like that to search so that's 621773 i'd imagine that's growing exponentially as more and more people start searching with a, a voice activated search 
Right, right. And you know what? Uh, it's still too early to tell, but looking at the raw data, what I seem to be gleaning from it is uh, when people type, they seem to be a lot more specific. You know, the search terms are a little bit longer in length than I would anticipate. Uh, and maybe that's because, like I said, they're choosing the suggestion that Amazon puts in front of them. But when then people speak, you know, Alexa is just being quiet. It's just listening to what you say. And people don't necessarily have a very specific search. Like they say, Alexa, I'd like to buy an iPhone 7 plus case that's colored in wood and made out of plastic and has 47. <laughs> but you know, th those kind of very specific things we sometimes see with typed searches, but we don't see very often with spoken searches. So are you seeing spoken searches be a, a smaller, a smaller search or? Well, I don't really have any good data to give you uh, yet. And matter of fact, this is where I probably should have just uh, kept my mouth shut and not talked about it because uh, I am going to get uh, a talking to from the marketing guys now. <laughs> but, but <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's something it's something that we're experimenting with. And, you know, maybe we just don't ever uh, have enough data to make any kind of uh, 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 conclusions. Right. And it could very well be that uh, even though I can't give you a good estimate about how many people are searching with Alexa versus how many people are typing or whatnot. Uh, what I can tell you is uh, it seems to be the trend that searches are, when they're spoken, are a little more concise, they're a little more brief, and then searches when they're typed seem to be a little more wordy. And I believe that's because people are apt to choose one of the auto suggestions that pops down. That's, that's my hunch. Okay, well, I'm going to bring up another page now. So um, hopefully you can see this. So uh, George emailed me over a little bit earlier, a little uh, link. Anybody that's wanting, so typically the price to get access to the global keyword data, so that's say the access to the data, not just from the USA, uh, but also from all the other marketplaces where Merchant Words operates in, including, of course, Australia. Typically, that's $60 a month. And George has done a very, very special deal for us of $39 a month, So, which is fantastic. And as always, with anything that George does and Merchant Words does, uh, there's zero risk. Can stay at any time. There's no long-term contracts, no long-term commitments, which I think is fantastic and speaks volumes about the integrity of these guys too. So anybody looking to take advantage of that should go to merchantwords.com forward slash Aussie online entrepreneurs, and you'll be able to get access into that and uh, be able to get yourself access to all of that brilliant new data sets that's coming along, as well as, of course, of all those great things that George has been teasing us with that are definitely on the way, uh, the things he's going to get himself into trouble with. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So, but you can see, I mean, you can tell from, from this very brief chat we've had with George tonight that here's a guy that um, is at the cutting edge of what's happening on Amazon, who is absolutely 100% committed to sellers like us doing well on Amazon and is committed to providing data to us that's above and beyond what anybody else is offering. And that's why I just love Merchant Words as a product. I think it's fantastic. So, George, I want to say a huge, huge thank you for joining us tonight. Oh, it was my pleasure. And, you know, I just I just got to say, I, I love uh, chatting with other online sellers. And I know I can't really hear any of you guys, but you can hear me. But I just want to say, you know, what you're doing and, you know, I'm an Amazon seller, too. What we're doing is fantastic, right? Helping the world, having the world shop easier and better. Uh, this this is great. And if I can do one little thing to kind of help our ecosystem and improve the quality of their listings, I know it's a small thing, right? But a little discount to help you understand some better keywords. I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to kind of uh, offer offer my little teeny bit of help for all of us uh, trying to become better Amazon sellers. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to uh, be part of your uh, your show here. I'm thrilled to have this opportunity to answer any questions. And you know what, let me just uh, kind of keep going here for a roll just for one second and say, if you if you have any more questions beyond the few that I've answered for you here tonight, just shoot them over to our customer care folks. They're really good at answering any questions you might have. And at the bottom of every page, even the one you're looking at here is that little green button that says help. Uh, if our if our customer care folks can, they'll chat with you in real time, in a real time chat. If they can't, if they don't have the time, they'll definitely get back in touch with you as soon as they can with your uh, emails. Uh, but we're, we're here to help you because I am and have been exactly where you are as an Amazon seller. I, I know what it's like and I know that every little bit helps. So if there's anything we can do to help you, whether it's a small discount or answering any questions you have, please reach out. Happy to help you any way I can. 
And, and guys, you should definitely as well uh, take advantage of, of this great offer that George has put together for us, but also make sure you come over and like their Facebook page as well. They update it with really, really good information, uh, not just on what's happening with Merchant Words, but also what they're seeing happening on Amazon as well. So definitely come over and like their page too, because they're giving out some great free information about the state of play with Amazon as well. For those of you who are in my advanced inner circle, you will be very, very happy to know that we're going to really get our geek on with George. Uh, is it in three months, three weeks time? We've got George coming on. It's going to be the Wednesday night, uh, from memory. It's the Wednesday night and we've got George going to stay up very, very late again for us and kind of give us a, a whole new level of, of intel about what's happening with Amazon, about what's happening with merchant words and about using that, that more geeky kind of data science sets uh, things to actually go in and explore Amazon and the world of Amazon on a much higher level. Yeah, totally looking forward to that. I, I'm, I'm, I see that on my calendar and I'm like, yeah, I can't wait. Bring it on. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a great, we're going to have a great time. So if you're in the advanced inner circle, you're going to get George at a whole new level. But uh, George, look, a huge thank you, mate. I know it's very, very late there. It's like, it's like quarter to two in the morning for George. So he stayed up late it for is, us. Yeah. And uh, even after getting riotously drunk watching Super Bowl, which I'm sure he did. Commercials were great. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but a huge thank you, mate. And uh, um, we look forward to uh, speaking to you more on the Advanced Inner Circle. But George, I'll let you get out of here now and uh, I'll carry on with the rest of the guys and carry on our evening with them. Thanks so much. Great. It's great being able to help everybody. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thanks. Bye now. All right, mate. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, how cool is that? Isn't he a nice guy? He is like super, super nice guy. Really, really honest, really massive amounts of integrity. Really, really clearly knows his stuff. Wouldn't you just love to get access to that data set that George has got all about Amazon? Holy bloody dooly. There'd be a whole world of money-making cash in there. I'm absolutely sure of that. So if you're interested, this is what they put together for us. It's 39 bucks. There's zero coming back to the Aussie online entrepreneurs, just so you know. It's not like an affiliate thing. Uh, this is just George doing something really, really nice for us, which I think is fantastic. So if you're interested in that, you know where it is. It's at uh, merchantwords.com forward slash Aussie online entrepreneurs. All right. Hey, Neil here. Just before you go away, that was a question that I got asked on my regular Monday night Q&A session, which I have with the members of the Aussie Online Entrepreneurs. So if you're interested in joining us as an Aussie Online Entrepreneurs, then you can click on the link below to find out a lot more about that. And, uh, and also, as a special thank you for watching this video, I've got a uh, great book that I wanna give you uh, for free. It's a current bestseller on Amazon and it teaches you everything that you would need to know about starting a business uh, here in Australia on Amazon. So uh, you can see that just up there. So if you'd like to get a copy of that for free, then again, just click on the link below and uh, you'll get a copy of that. You'll get to a, take into a page um, where you can get a copy of that for absolutely free. Hope you enjoyed that little snippet from one of my Aussie Online Entrepreneur Q&A sessions. And uh, make sure that you subscribe to my channel and also like this video. And if you've got a question that you would like answering, then post it in the comments below and uh, I'll do my best to answer it, whether on one of these videos for you or directly in the comments directly below. All right, thanks so much for watching and uh, I'll catch you next time on the next of the Aussie Online Entrepreneurs Amazon FBA Australia videos. Switch you soon.